and you might make it through training top of your class but if your patients don't like you and you can't communicate and talk to patients then you're not going to get very much business <laughs> welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome to my channel my name is Trey and I'm an internal medicine resident physician in lovely Atlanta Georgia and I make videos about my life and my journey through medicine so if any of that sounds remotely interesting to you make sure that you like this video make sure you comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to my channel we have a lot coming this year and i know that you don't want to miss out today's video we're going to be going over six traits that i think are absolutely essential and 100 percent necessary in order to one become a good physician and two actually enjoy this career i would say if you do not have these six traits you might want to rethink going into medicine in general and definitely becoming a doctor so without further ado let's just get into the traits that you need <laughs> so the first trait that I think is a hundred percent like no compromise you have to have this is discipline one of the ways that I was able to truly enjoy medical school was that I was very disciplined in my study schedule and studying and making deadlines is one of the biggest things in becoming a doctor. So your medical school journey is all literally all it is is studying and making deadlines. And then once you become a doctor, your deadlines are, oh, I have to do this note, I have to follow up on these labs, I have to talk to this patient, I have to go to this meeting. So being able to stick to the schedule and get done all of your tasks for the day is essential. And being able to do that in a way that you don't feel like you're literally dragging every day and just dreading your day. Being disciplined, writing things out is like 70% of the battle every single day for me I have to make a to-do list and I have to get it done and if I don't get it done I don't I don't even want to know what happens if I don't get it done so I just get it done the next essential trait is grit and grit is honestly it's probably one of my favorite words and I didn't learn about grit and what it was really until I was in medical school and I think we had a professor that said it a lot <laughs> and it really resonated with me especially during third year and then right now as I'm going through my intern year of residency. So what is grit? Grit is passion and perseverance as it pertains to your long-term goals. Becoming a doctor is going to be literally the biggest long-term goal you will probably ever have it takes so many years of school and even then it's like you're still a lifelong learner you might still want to specialize in a certain area so it's a long 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 term goal and another essential component of grit is having this passion and persevering despite obstacles you're going to be faced with so many challenges you're not always gonna be the best at anything. You're not always gonna be the head of your class. You're gonna fail. You're going to forget to do something. And it's how do you face those challenges? I get a lot of questions from you guys about, you know, what do I do if I made a C in this class in undergrad and now I'm trying to go to medical school or I made a D or whatever it might be. One of the biggest things that medical schools want to see is how did you deal with that? So what was the progress? What was the evolution of you as a person from this obstacle or were you kind of stagnant or did you not try again grit is everything okay i felt the most challenged like i said during third year of medical school which is when we're finally in the clinical rotation setting and then now and i think what's made those transitions so hard is that Every couple weeks I'm working with a new attending, one person might think you're great, one person might think you literally are incompetent. Um, 
and having to deal with that and having to adjust and having to tell myself that regardless of what anybody thinks about me, I know that I can be an amazing, fantastic doctor, that I love my patients and that I want to take care of people and help people and grow myself as a person and that's all that matters. I have to tell myself and talk to myself a lot <laughs> to get through these things and I used to think I was a big baby. I mean, I'm still kind of a big baby, like I, I have my moments, but I've also had to put my big girl pants <laughs> on and just get through stuff and see, you know, where I want to be in 10, 20 years. This is not a quick fix. So grit is necessary. The next essential characteristic is reliability slash accountability. A lot of medicine revolves around you and what you think, what you bring to the table, and just being honest and having integrity. I don't think I realized until really this year that like when a fresh patient comes in, right? Like they've never been to the hospital before. I'm responsible for telling their story in the electronic medical record. So if I say I did this component of the exam and I didn't do it, that constantly gets passed down. If I put in a diagnosis that's incorrect, if I don't get a full history, I have to be able to be trusted by my colleagues, by higher ups, like it's so much of your word and being reliable and accountable. Also, medicine is a team, so you're never alone, but people do depend on you. So being reliable and being accountable are key to being able to build trust with your team members, your colleagues, as well as your patients. They are relying on you to take care of them and to tell their story. The next essential trait or characteristic is Cooper ability, which I didn't even know. I might be even saying it wrong. I Googled it. It's literally like the ability to cooperate with others. It might be cooperability. That sounds weird. Whatever. I'll just spell it out on the screen. Um, so what is teamwork and what is being able to cooperate on a team? I think it, I shouldn't really have to explain it, but so I think I'll just do like an example. So some people really don't like communicating and talking to other human beings, but they want to go into medicine, which I don't really understand. I guess technically you could just be a radiologist but even then, we all talk to each other. So let's say, for example, I'm a general surgeon and all I do, not all I do, but kind of all I do, is I do surgeries all day, I do have clinic, but like I mainly just focus on the surgical issue for this patient. While they're on the surgical service, they're probably gonna have other medical issues if they're coming into the hospital. So the surgeons, still have to talk to the internal medicine doctors, still have to talk to the radiologists, still have to talk to the nurses that are taking care of their patients. And it is a teamwork effort. If one person doesn't know the answers, then we all need to come together and find the answers. And I know that some people think that they can go into medicine and not be able to communicate and work with others. There's a beautiful thing now that exists called Yelp. And you might make it through training, top of your class, but if your patients don't like you and you can't communicate and talk to patients, then you're not gonna get very much business. <laughs> so it does matter. People wanna be spoken to a certain way and people need to be able to come up to you if they have issues and feel like they left with some type of productive conversation. Um, and there's a nice way to talk to you catch way more flies with honey than you catch with vinegar. So communicating and being able to work in a team in the medical field, you literally cannot get around it. You're never just an independent person working on your own. You're gonna have to refer patients. You're going to have patients refer to you from other providers and you're gonna have to talk to them about the patient. The next trait that you have to have is flexibility. 
This is a trait that I don't think a lot of people have until they have to have it. I don't think I was a very flexible person. I am very much a big brat when it comes to, I wanna do this, this, and this at this time in every other aspect of my life, but I had to give it up as far as medicine because I would, I would literally be so stressed and unhappy if I was not able to be flexible. My schedule every single day is different because I can't predict what's gonna happen when I go into the hospital, which patient is gonna you know, have issues to where I have to stay late which days I'm gonna get out super early, which call days I'm gonna come home at 10 p.m. or which call days I'm gonna come home at 7.30. You don't know. And even as a medical student, like first and second year, you're mainly doing like lecture-based learning and then occasionally you might go into the hospital, but you're on a schedule. They tell you, oh, you're shadowing this doctor from this time to this time. I got very used to that schedule. Third year, I was like, what? What is going on? Like the attending might choose to keep you there super late one day, let you go early the next day. The residents might make you stay and do stuff or they might not even care that you're there. And every rotate, like you would constantly be switching rotations. Like I said, constantly switching attendings, working with different people who had different dynamics and different expectations of you. And so I quickly had to learn that if I didn't let go of some of that control that I felt like I needed to have, I was going to just stress myself out. This year, intern year, I knew was gonna be rough. Um, but one of my biggest things is that on my days off, because I typically only get one day off, I don't like to do a bunch of like household errands. I just don't, like that's not what I want to do for my day off, if I can help it. So I've had to learn like, you know, you might have to clean a little bit on these days so that on your day off, you don't have to do that. Or sometimes I have to go to the grocery store at nine, 10 o'clock at night when I get home from work, just so that the next day I can have a little bit of reprieve and a little bit of a break. Um, same thing with making time for like family, friends, significant others. It's a lot of squeezing, a lot of making things work. You just gotta make it work. So if you're a person that's so like uptight about your schedule and doing things on a certain schedule and your time being your time, you're gonna hate medicine and don't go into it. <laughs> the last trait that you definitely have to have is humor slash humility. These are essential. I honestly would put these probably number one on the list because that is the only way you're gonna get through this as unscathed as possible. Um, and I hope you guys from watching my videos can tell that I have learned a lot to just laugh at myself and laugh at things and laugh at life because we can't be so serious all the time. We deal with a lot of serious things in the hospital it's a high stress environment. You're working, 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 working all day. But one of my favorite things is when we are in the workroom and it's just the team, we laugh so much. Like everything is so funny when you're so stressed out. I don't know. It is funny. And I laugh with my patients and I laugh with my nurses. And sometimes I get phone calls and I'm just, I just start laughing. Cause I'm like, this is my life. <laughs> but in a good way. There are positives, there are ups. There are downs, but there are also a lot of ups. So, I think that rounds out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that this was helpful. Hope it gave you some insight to be able to make a better decision for yourself if you do think that medicine is still the right move for you. Make sure that you leave a comment down below. I think if you made it to the end of this video, comment a tooth emoji does that exist let me check i think it does yes okay comment a tooth emoji because if you watched my um video where i was talking about like i hate it here like things i wish i had known before i went into medicine and i was talking about how my health was in like 
the crevice crack behind the stove, like not even the back burner. I finally went to the dentist after three years on Friday because I'm on vacation right now. So I finally went to the dentist. I'm getting my teeth together and I'm very excited about it. So comment a tooth emoji and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.